Howdy folks, I just thought I would uh, record another quick video here showing you how to use uh, this TI-84 calculator to do some normal calculations because uh, we could do stuff always using table A, but um, that kind of takes forever half the time and so it's kind of chalked. So um, let's, let's take a look at how to do this. Let's say we have a variable X, which is approximately normal with a mean of 52 and a half, standard deviation of 10.4. Let's calculate these things. For the, so the first thing is, the probability that X is between 50 and 60, right? So I'm just gonna quickly sketch uh, a rough normal curve here and oh, that's all right, not so bad. Um, technically 52 and a half would go in the center here, right? And then um, I would go up and down some number of standard deviations. Now, I, I could figure out exactly where 50 and 60 ought to be on here, but I'm just gonna estimate it roughly. Um, 50 is a little bit less than 52, so I'm just gonna go like that and um, 60, well, that's less than one standard deviation above the mean, at z-score would be something or other, but I'm too lazy to calculate it. Um, so this is the area that I'm actually looking for, everything between 50 and 60, right, um, in this normal distribution. So I'll label that 50 and that 60. Okay, so I could count, convert 50 and 60 to z-scores and then look stuff up with this table, but like I said, I'm kind of too lazy for that. So. Here's how we could do it in the calculator directly. It's very nice, you just hit second vars, right? And that takes you to these distributions. The one we want is normal CDF. That stands for the normal cumulative distribution function. We'll click on that guy and then we'll just put in some information. Um, if you have the stat wizard, we can just plug this in directly. We can say the lower boundary would be 50, the upper boundary would be 60, the mean would be 52.5, and the standard deviation would be um, 10.4 if I just hit enter and that pace it. So folks that do not have the fancy stat wizard, you have an older TI calculator, you'd have to actually just type these numbers in in this order and you would need to know that the first number you type in is the lower boundary, comma, upper boundary, comma, mean, comma, standard deviation. And if you hit enter, well, well look at that. It just kind of told us that the answer is 35.2. Uh, something percent, right? Almost about 36 percent. So we're done. We don't really have to do anything too fancy. That this cal the calculator just told me that the mean, or excuse me, the area under the curve is 0 0.3596 or about 35.96 percent. Done. It's amazing. All right. So let's do another guy here real quick. Now let's say the proportion of the uh, x that's less than 40. So let me draw another little normal curve here, la 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 la. So 52.5 goes in the middle again. Um, how far down is 40? Well, let me just actually check that real quick. Let me do 52.5 minus 40 divided by 10.4. And that tells me that it's 1.2 standard deviations um, below the mean. I technically should have done 40 minus 52.5, so we saw the negative, but whatever. Uh, but this, so this is where 40 would be. And let me shade that in now. And just estimating this, I see that it's, it's, um, it's z score is 1.2, so this is gonna be less than 16%. I know if I had gotten up to the first standard deviation, it would have been 16%. So let's just do this in our calculator now. So I'm gonna hit, uh, again, I'll clear this out, I'll hit second vars. I'll go normal CDF, enter. And um, now for my lower boundary, I need my calculator to go infinitely far to the left. And by default, sometimes the calculator has this little negative 1E99 business. Really, you just need an extremely small number, something that's way, way, way to the left of this value. And so I just like to hit negative with a bunch of nines. You don't need to go insane, but that works. So I'll put a 40 there for the upper boundary. Same mean and standard deviation. Let's paste it. And I'll just hit enter and um, huh, check it out. I got, apparently this is a 0 0.1147 or about 11.47%. Huh, that was nice. All right, well, let's, let's keep going. I got one more question here. Now, I wanted us to find the 90th percentile. So this is gonna require a different calculator function. This is kind of like the situation where we would go to the table and we'd have to look up and find the area under the curve and then find the z-scores on the edges. Um, th this calculator can do that when we want to find 
the actual, the value that is a particular percentile, we'll have to use this other function called inverse norm. It's sort of the backwards of normal CDF. So if I hit second, vars, you look and you see here option three that says inverse norm. It's the inverse operation of finding the area. You plug in the area and it'll tell you the boundary. So um, if you notice here, it prompts you if you've got uh, the stat wizard. So we have to plug in an area. So I want the 90th percentile. Well, let me quick draw a sketch so I can get a picture of what this should look like. Boom, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, we, we established that one standard deviation above the mean is the 84th percentile. So the 90th should be a little bit further past that. Um, you might remember what the z-score is. I happen to remember the z-score for this, but I'm, I guess, the, I don't know. I'm not trying to say that I'm extra special. I've just been doing this a long time, you know? Um, but let me shade all this stuff in. So this is the area here. So if this is the 90th percentile, then I'm just gonna say the amount I just shaded in is 90%, or I'm gonna write it, notice I just wrote it as 0 0.90. And the key here is that the calculator needs that area to be entered as a decimal, not as a percentage. So I'll just put um, 0 0.9. Now, if I wanted to know what the z-score was, I could leave the mean as zero and the standard deviation is one, but I might as well use this distribution here. So well, notice I put zero in the middle. I'm not working with z-scores. I'm working with actual values from this x distribution. So I'm gonna fix that mean to be 52 and a half. And um, I'm guessing the answer will be a little bit more than one standard deviation above the mean. So let's see, the standard deviation was 10.4. So I have the area, the mean, the standard deviation. Let's paste that. And once again, for those folks without the stat wizard, you just have to know to type the numbers in in this order. Um, the area, the mean, and the standard deviation. Just hit enter. What? Oh my gosh, my lights turned off. Hold on. We have these lights on, um, on uh, motion sensors, so I guess I wasn't moving enough. Sorry about that. Well, anyway, the calculator just said uh, 65.8. To eight, right? And so what it's saying is that this boundary right here would be where, where x equals 65.8 approximately, right? Um, that should be the, the boundary uh, for the bottom 90%. In other words, this is the 90th percentile, right? So that's very, very cool. Isn't this great? It's, it's not so bad. Um, the calculator uh, can do the same kind of stuff that this table can do, except it can do it better and it can do it faster. Um, if you want to use the table, go ahead, but the calculator is going to get it done much more quickly. Guys, uh, have a beautiful day. Hope this helped. Adios. And giddy up.